Some teams are only playing one game in the next scoring period, so set your lineups accordingly. Hi there, Lauren Shahadi, Jamie Eisenberg, and our very new desk. What do you think? I like it, except I don't want to thumb wrestle you anymore while we wait for them to fix it. <laughs> I am the champion thumb wrestler. I will take any of you on. I'm fantastic because I got nails. <laughs> All right, let's get to the good stuff. Let's talk about Elton Brand. Here's a guy with such huge potential, just 29 games, a five-year, $80 million contract to waste, really. Yeah, sort of. You know, when you talk about the production that the Sixers were expecting and what fantasy owners were expecting from Elton Brand, you're not going to get it because he's done for the season with the shoulder injury. He's going to have surgery. Uh, probably a good thing at this point because we saw what he looked like in the six games that he came back after first getting hurt and he didn't look like the same player. So I think at least it gives you an idea that you can release him at this point in the majority of leagues because even in keeper leagues, you know, going forward with Elton Brand, we don't know what he's going to look like. We don't know what the Sixers are going to look like next year. You know, there are even some rumors about him possibly being traded before the, uh, he decided to shut it down. So I think you look at the Sixers now going forward, Lauren, it's a situation where they probably have a better idea of how they're going to look because last year they were really a running team, a, a, a team that was, you know, got up and down the floor, and that's why they made the playoffs, and I think they get back to that style, and we'll talk about this in a little bit. Some of the Sixers now become a little bit better options going forward now that Brand is out of the out of the picture. Okay, Ray Allen is very much in the picture when it comes to the All Star game because of, of course, Jameer Nelson's injury. Yeah, that allows Ray Allen to become an All Star, well deserving on his part. Unless you're talking to Cleveland, of course, which would yeah, like sure. to see Mo Williams in there. But uh, when you look at Jameer Nelson, you know it sounds like the Magic are counting on him missing the rest of the season because, as we know, on Thursday they made the trade. Tyron Lue from Milwaukee for Keith Bogans. Tyron Lue going to be the backup now to Anthony Johnson. Johnson had a great first game uh, in place of Nelson in the starting lineup. You know, had the 25 points. Uh, I think if you have the chance to pick up a guy like Nelson, uh, excuse me, Johnson at this point, that's a good way to go because he could have some value going forward. Tyron Lue, not so much. And then Keith Bogans goes to Milwaukee. He's going to replace Michael Redd, probably going to get a lot of extended playing time. There's also been a report now, Lauren, that Luke Ridenour has a broken thumb. So if he's out, Ramon Sessions continues to start at point guard, and now Bogans could start at two guard for the Bucks, which will allow Bogans' fantasy value to go up a little bit more. Here's my question. I'm sure a lot of you have the same question. Are there any healthy centers out there? Andrew Bogut now dealing with a back injury. Yeah. What do we make of all of it? Well, we make of that, you know, Andrew Bogut's going to miss eight weeks and could, and could be another guy that could be out for the season. The Bucks just dealing with a string of injuries. You know, along with Bogut, you have Michael Redd, as we talked about, and also now Luke Ridenour. So I think you look at Bogut, you obviously have to keep him reserved. You're not going to cut him at this point because if, in fact, he does come back and you're still in your fantasy playoffs, he could be a guy that could help you. But it doesn't sound very good. You know, when you talk about back injuries for big guys, especially seven-foot guys, that's not a good scenario. Uh, the Bucks invest a lot of money in Andrew Bogut. They're probably going to want to make sure he's healthy for next year because even if they do make the playoffs right now, they're fighting for the eighth seed in the Eastern Conference. They're not going to make a deep run. So they need Andrew Bogut healthy for the future, especially with Michael Red out now. You're probably looking at a scenario where you're talking 2009, 2010. I don't think you're going to see Andrew Bogut make too much of an impact, but I would still hold on to him at this point just because if he does come back, he could give you a little bit of value later in the year. Okay, back injuries and knee injuries, never a good thing. Not nope. like any injuries are, but those two in particular. Let's get to the good stuff, Jamie. We talked last week about that window of opportunity and for Samuel Dallenberg that time is now because of Brand's injury. Yeah it's absolutely opened a big window for Samuel Dallenberg you know a guy's coming off a 20 rebound game you know dealing with some ankle soreness but you know what he's playing well and I think he's going to continue to play even better. I think you'll see his scoring continue to go up you know he'll probably be around double figures in scoring and the rebounding should stay above double figures as long as Brand is out of there. He's going to lose some of the opportunities to guys like Thaddeus Young, Maurice Spates. These guys are definitely worth keeping an eye on and I think Thaddeus Young as you'll see we're starting this week, but Samuel Dallenbert, a good start center for the upcoming scoring period. The Sixers have great matchups this week, Phoenix and Memphis, so that's a good thing to keep an eye on. It's all about the matchups, and it's all about consistency, really. And when you're talking about Greg Oden, he hasn't been consistently good or consistently bad, Jamie. Yeah, he's been really erratic with his play. You know, he did have three double-doubles in five games, and then he had three games with less than 10 points, less than 10 rebounds in each of those games. So I think you look at Greg Oden, he needs the minutes to be on the court to be successful. Obviously, Portland trying to make sure that they're continuing their playoff push. So they're not going to really go with an experimental situation with Odin. If he starts off the game playing well, I think that's something that will continue. But if he struggles to start the game, then you're going to see him probably get a quick hook. So we want to see Greg Odin play well, but I think the way that he's playing right now, right now he's coming off one of those cold streaks. So with only two games in this scoring period, I think you want to keep Greg Odin reserved. Even though Portland has a couple of good matchups this week, I still think it's not a better idea just to keep him on the bench uh, for this coming scoring okay, period. Okay, when he's hot start and when he's not, don't. What about this next guy when he's playing center? And I'm talking about Charlie Villanueva. Yeah, he could be playing center, but he's playing center, not starting at center. He's playing center okay. in the middle of games. He's coming in when the Bucks go to a smaller lineup, uh, which is something that's probably going to continue with Bogut out now for the eight weeks. So I think you look at Villanueva, he's playing really well, uh, got two good matchups in this coming scoring period. And as we know about Milwaukee, they're going to have to find scoring from other areas because no Michael Red, 
no Luke Ridenour now, who's out with a broken thumb, and now you have Bogut out for the eight weeks. So I think you look at the way Milwaukee's going to have to play, you're going to see a lot of Villanueva, a lot of Ramon Sessions, a lot of Richard Jefferson. All three guys are great starts this week, especially Villanueva at the forward spot. And no love for Minnesota's love machine, Kevin Love. He's producing. Why are we sitting him, Jamie? He's sitting him because he's one of the few teams Minnesota is with only one game this week, which is why you see all these forwards as sit options, Paul Millsap, Hito Turkoglu as well. So I think you look at Kevin Love, could be motivated to play well in the one game because he's coming into the All-Star break. He's a guy that felt he should have been in the rookie-sophomore challenge. That's really motivated him to play well. Uh, Minnesota's really taken off the last few games, but I think just because they only have the one game this week, that's a big scenario. You know, it's always we talk about matchups, especially when you talk fantasy sports. Fantasy basketball, this is the time to look at matchups because All-Star Week, only teams with one game or two games, as you, as you talked about to open the show. Mm -hmm. I think that's a scenario why you sit Kevin Love this week. And a scenario for why you start Jamal Crawford is? Because he has two games, he has two good games, and he's playing well. You know, coming off a really good game uh, against Phoenix, he has another game against Phoenix on Friday night. I think you'll see Jamal Crawford really come out and play well, starting to make a push for the Warriors. You know, they're going to struggle to make the playoffs, but they still have great scoring options, great fantasy options. When you talk about Crawford, Monta Ellis, Corey Maggette, Steven Jackson playing at a triple-double pace at this point, though. Jamal Crawford's really the guy that gets them going, and I think he's going to continue to get them going. The scoring will be there. We want to see the assist totals continue to be high, and I think that does happen in the next scoring period. And we want to see guys make free throws like Devin Harris did against Milwaukee, but he's not starting for your team, is he? No, again, a situation where only one game in the upcoming scoring period, and it's against the San Antonio Spurs. As we know, San Antonio, one of the best defensive teams. He's going to have to deal with uh, Tony Parker, Manu Ginobili, all these guys in the backcourt for the San Antonio Spurs, and I think just with Devin Harris coming in the All-Star break, probably a scenario where he's looking ahead to playing in the All-Star game. As we talked about, this is the All-Star break video, so I think you look at Devin Harris, you know, probably got his eyes a little bit on that game in, in Phoenix. I think it's just a scenario where you sit him this week if you can afford to. Thank you, Jamie, and we are so glad you watched. Now the rest is up to you. Good luck for Jamie Eisenberg. I'm Lauren Zahadi. See you guys next time.